So Ken McDonald, a Liberal MP from Newfoundland and Labrador, has come out and spoke against the, the actual Liberal government that he stands for and against carbon tax. He's come out and said he doesn't think they should be pushing carbon tax onto people while the interest rates on homes are so high and food is so expensive and inflation is so high. Let's have a listen to what he says on, on power and politics when he was interviewed uh, just last week. Everywhere I go, people come up to me and say, you know, we're losing uh, faith in the Liberal Party. Uh, they appreciate the fact that I've stood up now twice uh, to do away with a carbon tax or to ask for it to be delayed. Uh, I said to someone earlier today, I said I stand with Premier Fury in trying to get not this done away with as such, but get it delayed till we get past this affordability issue. People are finding it very difficult. I've had people tell me they can't afford to buy groceries, uh, they can't afford to heat their homes. And that's hard to hear from especially seniors who live alone and uh, tell me that they go around their house in the spring and winter time with a blanket wrapped around them because they can't afford the home heating fuel. In Parliament, Ken McDonald was the only person, the only Liberal MP to go against Trudeau's carbon tax regime uh, that's obviously making people struggle to pay for anything like food and heating. It's refreshing to see an MP, a Liberal MP, go against his own government for the rights of his constituents. He's actually standing up for the people who voted for him. 6.40 a.m. also discussed this matter, and here's a clip I got from the radio just the other week. Yeah, absolutely. And I gotta say, Newfoundland actually has a very unique history in this respect. There's a long tradition of Newfoundland members of parliament sort of breaking ranks and standing up for the interests of their constituents and of their province. And I agree, it's very nice to see. But I think a lot of people, you know, in Montreal, Toronto, rest of the country don't realize when we talk about the carbon tax yeah. and the Conservative Party's opposition to it, people often assume that the primary zone that it's pandering to or whatever word you want to use is to the west, the prairies, or it's the oil. It's the, but the fact of the matter is the place where it is hurting people the most right now is actually in Atlantic Canada. And it's thoroughly unpopular. If you look at a lot of the polling shit that's happening there, conservatives are way, way up. Like you said, they keep in mind, right, this is the part of the country that voted 32 seats out of 32 seats for Justin Trudeau in 2015 when he came to power. And the majority of the seats have remained liberal since. But this has really, really harmed people out there. And we can see it in the public polling. There's been a pronounced shift towards the conservative as a direct result of this. So yes, part of it, absolutely, we should give the gentleman credit for standing up for his constituents. But a lot of this is also just straight up response to the reality that he knows he's about to lose his job or run the risk yeah. of him, so if he doesn't. Are you gonna struggle paying for your heat this winter with the new carbon tax? Are you struggling to drive your car? Are you struggling to go anywhere in your car? Did you struggle over Thanksgiving to actually, you know, get anywhere because the price of fuel, although in Toronto, the fuel came down six cents because of something to do with OPEC. But are you going to struggle with paying for your home heating over the winter? Just leave a comment. Let's have a talk about this. This is pretty serious when it comes down to people wrapping themselves up in blankets and having to choose between heating the home or eating. Till next time.